So is that system that you're playing on or the game that you're enjoying really as good as what you think it is? Or was it something just planted in your head by the PR team? According to a new study from the University of York in the UK, public relations or the marketing of a game can heavily influence gamers by basically using the placebo effect. So I'm sure most of you have heard about the placebo effect. You normally hear about it whenever it comes to medicine. The idea is that for some people, you can give them a sugar pill and they're sick. And if you tell them that it's medicine that they're taking, even though this pill has absolutely no medical attributes whatsoever, some people will begin feeling better because in their mind they think they're taking medicine that's going to make them better. So it's really a mind over matter phenomenon. And it's still not completely understood. Some people think you can trick your mind into releasing certain chemicals which will help things with uh, pain and other ailments. Um, but one scientist wanted to know if you could basically do the same thing to gamers. Could you simply plant the idea in a gamer's mind that a game was better than it, what it actually was. So they did a number of tests. In one study, they took 21 people and had them play this adventure game in which the player has to collect objects using a map in order to survive. And in one round, they told the people that they were playing a randomly generated map. In the second round, they told the players that this was a new system, so it was going to be controlled by an adaptive artificial intelligence that could change the map based on the player's skill level. And after the players played each round, then they were given a survey. But the game had no AI whatsoever. They were playing the exact same version each round. It was just completely randomly generated whatever appeared. But when people thought that they were playing with an adaptive AI, they consistently rated the game as being more immersive and more entertaining. Some said the AI made it harder, while others thought that it actually made it easier. But nobody found that both versions were equal. Nobody realized that they were playing the same exact game. One player said, quote, The adaptive AI put me in a safer environment and seemed to present me with resources as needed. Another said, quote, It reduces the time of exploring the map, which makes the game more enjoyable. They did another test later on with 40 other people in a controlled setting, and the results were the same. And they said it doesn't matter whether you're talking about, you know, implanting the idea that somebody has a fancy AI in their game. You could say that you're just simply playing the latest version of a game that has been updated recently, so it's newer and better, and people will tend to believe that it's a better game. So PR or marketing can have a big impact on gamers. And if you think about it, you know, remember AI fish in Call of Duty, or you hear the quotes, for the players, greatness awaits, power to the players. I mean, these are all phrases coined by a PR marketing team who's invested a lot of money to see how people feel when they hear these phrases. And I actually thought about doing a video at, at some point, like an After Dark video on public relations, because PR, if you didn't realize it, is basically the same thing as propaganda in a lot of instances. In fact, the guy who is called the father of public relations, his name is Edward Bernays, you can look him up. His uncle was Sigmund Freud, which you probably heard of if you know anything about psychology. And Edwards was often quoted by the Nazis. That's how they became so good with propaganda is because they were reading this guy's work. And there's actually a video clip of Edward Bernays. He's, he's on film stating that he saw how effective propaganda was during wartime, so he wanted to bring that same mentality during peacetime. But he couldn't use the word propaganda because that was considered a bad word because the Nazis had used it. So he coined the term public relations, uh, which, I mean, was the same thing as far as he was concerned. And I don't think this guy was a good guy, but he was definitely very intelligent in the sense that he figured things out. And he basically thought that the masses, the public, was pretty dumb. And so what ha would happen is corporations would actually come to him and ask him for help. So I'll tell you this one story real quick because I, I find this stuff pretty interesting. Back in the early 1900s, women didn't smoke. It was outlawed in some places. It was seen as taboo. And only women on the lower rung of society, like prostitutes, smoked. And it was seen as unladylike. 
Well, one cigarette company knew that they were missing half their potential sales because women weren't smoking, so they hired Bernays to fix it. So what Bernays did was he paid a group of good-looking, upper-class women to pull out a pack of cigarettes and begin smoking them during a Sunday Easter parade in New York. And what he did was he called several news outlets and told them, hey, I hear that there's going to be this group of women who's going to be protesting during the parade. Because you have to remember, this was the period uh, where women were trying to get certain rights. And so what they did was the media showed up on cue with their cameras, and these women, whenever they were told to, they pulled out their cigarettes, started smoking, and they had a banner that said, Torches of Freedom. And the next day, the story was broadcast not just in New York, but around the world. And so women everywhere saw these upper-class, attractive women smoking their torches of freedom. And that one act broke down the entire barrier everywhere. And what Bernays learned, if you read some of his material, is that people aren't swayed by logical and reasonable thinking. You cannot be a company who's trying to sell a product and say, these are the reasons why you need to get this product. Most people buy on instincts and their feelings. And so Bernays went after people's feelings and emotions, how something made them feel. So a car company, you, you go watch a car commercial. They don't try to sell you on the fact that you need a car to get from point A to point B. They sell you on the feeling that this is going to make you feel better. This is going to give you a higher status in society. And it's going to make you feel good. And so go watch a set of commercials on TV. You know, go look at, you know, pretty much anything. They're all playing on people's feelings and emotions. And so not because somebody has to have something or they need something. He built this system that basically every marketing company in the world uses today. Uh, so anyway, I know we got maybe a tad bit off subject, but I did think that it was sort of relevant. And maybe one day I'll do an After Dark video on propaganda. And here's one more fun fact. The U.S. government used to have a ban against using propaganda against the American people. But the NDAA Act that passed in 2013 basically makes it legal again for the government to use propaganda against their own people. And then for some reason, people still don't understand why I question so much. If you want to read this study about video games, links down in the description box post below. Did you realize that people are so easily influenced by simply planning the idea in their head that maybe they're playing a game that's got some sort of, you know, crazy artificial intelligence when it may be completely dumb? That does it for me, The Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Are you listening? Damn.